Norway has just chalked up another EV record, and the numbers are actually quite a bit surreal now because they're you know they're very close to 100%. They've been above 90 for quite a while. In August 2025, plug-ins took 98.4% of the electric vehicle market, or the, the vehicle market, I should say, and batch electric vehicles alone grabbed 96.9% of the, the whole market. Almost every new car sold last month in Norway was fully electric. So uh, total new car volume was up as well. That was 13,915 vehicles sold in the country, which is a country of 5.5 million people roughly, uh, which is up 25% year on year. And the best seller, of course, was the... You can pause it here and put in the comments what you think the best seller is, but... It was the Model Y, basically. It's always the Model Y in Norway. And this comes right after July already, uh, which set the record at 97.2% plug-in share, which, uh, you know, we, we, that was a back-to-back -back record, basically. So July and August, they're kind of back-to-back -back records for the for basically forever. It was a big deal. Hey, folks. Ben Alexander here. Thank you for tuning in. I really appreciate your time. Thank you to these people on screen who are the channel members on Patreon and here on YouTube. Also, thank you to Keith, who I think a few hours ago, you chucked me a couple of dollars. Thank you very much, Keith. That's really chipper when someone uh, helps the, helps me sort of do my videos, so thank you very much. Across the first eight months of 2025, battery electric vehicles account for a 94.5% share, which is the highest year to date battery electric vehicle share they've ever seen entering September in Scandinavia or Norway. So it's not just uh, one or two freak months. This is the whole year, basically, which has just been a couple of percent lower than these numbers. So that's leaning very, very close to 100% electric vehicles at this point, I think, uh, the past three months anyway. Quick model context while we're here. Multiple outlets are confirming that Tesla Model Y led in August. You can actually get the information from the state uh, re you know, registration authority, basically, in Scandinavia. And local press has noted a kind of swingy brand race month to month, to month as supply ebbs and flows. But the overarching theme is that EVs are definitely dominating, obviously, at this point. And uh, because of the policy, really, and uh, every leaderboard now in Scandinavia is kind of confirming this in Norway, whether it's... Uh, Tesla or Volkswagen or the newer Chinese brands coming out, such as BYD, fighting for fighting for a kind of slice of uh, a nearly all electric proverbial pie. Why is this happening? And can other countries realistically just copy exactly what Norway is doing if this is kind of what they want? Uh, obviously not. First, prices at the point of sale are engineered by policy. Norway still runs a zero VAT rate on battery electric vehicles uh, purchases up to uh, 500,000 Norwegian krona of the vehicle price. And above that threshold, you then start to pay above that 25% VAT on the excess after it. That policy has been explicitly prolonged. Obviously, people really like that. I think at one point you could buy a Tesla model S for kind of a comparable price to uh, Ford Mondeo. It was a bit of a wild thing. I remember doing a video on that a few years ago. And on top of this, there's a weight-based purchase tax now in Norway, which also applies to EVs. For 2025, it's been priced, uh, price adjusted to 14.44 uh, Norwegian krona per kilogram over 500 kilograms worth of car, basically. So in practice, that kind of averages roughly uh, 18,000 Norwegian krona per electric vehicle. And, uh, yeah, I think for, like, 10 krona, you get about, is it, like, 80 pence or something like that? So it's kind of, it used to be 10 years ago that Norwegian krona was stronger, but the Norwegian krona is worth about 20% less now. So when I say uh, 18,000 krona, I think it's about, uh, say, 1,600 pounds or something like that, roughly. So, or that's about... Uh, 3,000 Aussie dollars if you're from Australia, which we, this rebalances some revenue while we're uh, while still leaving EVs far cheaper. They're just sort of up the price of an EV basically in 2025, uh, which is they're still cheaper, way way cheaper, especially when you drive them and you don't pay for petrol, which typically in Scandinavia is is quite expensive. It's like well over double Australian prices, and uh, yeah, probably 30% more than Britain. Second, electricity is quite clean, relatively cheap in Norway and Scandinavia. Uh, there has been some ups and downs in the price in Scandinavia during uh, the big event that we all just endured a few years ago. And uh, yeah, depending on the data set that you're actually looking at, Norway's grid is 90% hydropower with wind taking up 
uh, most of the remainder of that, basically, and then fossil generation hovering around 1%. Third, the momentum, it's, it is self-reinforcing. Once you have months like July at 97.2%, and August, which is 98.4%, the used market, the dealer pipeline, residual values, consumer expectations, what we all kind of expect, all kind of revolve around electric vehicles, basically. It's, it's such a big portion now. It's basically everything on the, you know, we all that's kind of what we expect so people generally order what their neighbors already drive and you know also kind of cars like teslas and stuff are a bit of a status symbol for so many people especially here in brisbane when somebody buys one your friend will buy one or your siblings will buy one or something like that so that's just kind of it's a big deal really norway's july record was already really really good august is obviously a bit better so the kind of electric vehicles have now just consumed the Norwegian market at this point. It's not really a goal anymore. They've practically got there, haven't they, to 100% practically. Only a couple of people are buying something other than an EV. So let me throw in some uh, really hard concrete numbers at you because, like me, you're probably, you like the hard data. So August 2025, total registrations for the country were 13,915, which is up 25% year on year. Battery electric vehicles, so full electric vehicles, were 13,482, so yeah, pretty much all of them, equating to 96.9% uh, battery electric vehicle share. When you add that with the hybrids as well, that goes up to 98.4%. Year to date, though, uh, through to August, uh, battery electric vehicle share is 94.5%. So over the this year, basically, for the whole year, you could say it's, it's practically 94.5%, but uh, in the last couple of months, it was they're doing really well. So does this mean that the job is kind of done? Not really. I don't think it is. Winter range still drops a lot. A lot of people having issues with cars that just don't have enough range for, that they bought, you know, from 2017, that sort of thing. Especially up north, you can get very, very long queues sometimes at the really, really popular fast charges on very specific occasions like uh, bank holidays or weekends and things like that. I, I know uh, because I've I've ever I, I've seen them, so I know for a fact they do exist. It's just not that common in uh, Norway to see that, but it does happen. And policy will slowly normalise as EVs become uh, the default in the next ten years. I reckon in ten years' time, obviously, just about every car on the road is going to be an electric car in Scandinavia. But even you know, with Norway introducing weight tax on electric vehicles and trimming incentives since 2023, I think it was. The market kept accelerating, which tells you that the transition is kind of past its fragile stage. And a lot of people, this is something I do know, is mechanics are expensive in Scandinavia. There are not many of them, and they're really expensive. And speak to anybody in Norway, and if you're Norwegian, please put in the comments below some of the you know kind of expensive prices that you've paid for a mechanic. It's wildly expensive. I know someone paid uh, 10,000 krona to just get a mechanic to look at their car. So you're talking like 1,500 Aussie dollars or like 800 quid basically in England uh, to just have someone look at it for an hour or two just to confirm that there's an issue with a certain part. Of it. Super expensive. And then you've got to pay for repairs. And, you know, as soon as a car is a bit niche or a bit rare, yeah, it's quite hard to, uh, to to fix them, basically. But people get by, obviously, and they definitely do, but it causes people a lot of stress, I think. Norway's population is quite small, and there's an abund basically an abundant amount of hydro, as much as you could want. It's kind of like Australia with almost infinite irradiant energy. You've only got a few million people in, in Aust Australia, and you've got this massive landmass, and all this energy coming down. We don't really need to be burning coal or doing silly things to produce electricity, really. Although there is a big debate about this sort of stuff, you know, like where the coal goes. Do we send the coal to China for them to sell sell us back solar panel, etc., etc.? You can't transplant that wholesale system into Australia or the UK because they're just inherently different, obviously. What you can copy, though, are the levers that clearly move the needle, or the mechanical levers, the political levers... To make it safe from not not selling very many EVs, it's a bit hard to sell them. To a lot of people are buying them. So basically, in the UK, for example, if ta if uh, petrol went up thirty percent in the next year, EVs would start selling more. And the government know this, of course. So it's best, I think, to do kind of what Norway has done, where you're a little bit more stable, you're a bit more long termy predictable long-term rules that manufacturers and companies can kind of trust are going to be there in a year's time so buyers and importers can plan and you know aggressive charging infrastructure rollout 
that can happen as well. And uh, obviously, I think the government should pay more for their charges than you know, individual uh, profiteers, basically, because I think it's um, you, you'll not end up paying huge amounts to charge if that's the case, I think. And uh, yeah, keeping electricity cheap and clean is a very big deal. So the rest happens surprisingly quickly once the economics kind of line up and people start buying them. So number one... In July 2025, it was a then record 97.2% plug-in share in Norway. August broke it again, and that went up to 98.4%, with battery electric vehicles at 96.9%. Number two, entering September, Norway's battery electric vehicle share for the year stood at 94.5%, which is just uh, wild in a kind of mature car market in Norway. If you were wondering what the kind of the end game of the EV adoption kind of looks like in, in Norway, ICE vehicles will simply be stopped by the Norwegian government, clearly. It's not that they will just fade out and always let a couple of people buy them. They're just going to end them, of course, because they have had that written in their plan for, for quite a few years already. So, all right, I'll leave you with a question or two. In your country, uh, if your country matched Norway's VAT threshold and, uh, you know, zero VAT up to a certain price, that's you know, pretty uh, decent and 25% on top of the excess and added a modest weight tax to keep the big heavy vehicles in check. Would that be enough to push your local market over the tipping point or like really bring that up? Do you think, what do you think people would take issue with? Or is the blocker something else like the lack of reliable fast charging between cities or intermittently working chargers like in the UK? We, we You know, people in Britain apparently do tell me you have that a lot in England where you go to a charger it's buggered, it's not working. So yeah, especially in regional areas as well, because uh, the problems can be quite different if you're a rural or in a very regional area, like right in the middle of Norway, for example, having a fast charger that works is important because the next one might not be for, you know, 30 minutes drive away. So that's a big deal. Thank you for watching and please subscribe if you're interested in these videos. Any questions, just put them in the comments. We will all probably endeavor to reply at some point. There's not just me, loads of people will reply. So yeah, see you again in the next video.